I thought, then if it's going to see proof out. But anybody thinking that police, so maybe trying to give her explain or something, that person is saying it out of mischief and is highly discouraging. For us to have risked her life, to have carried out our professional colleagues now and getting her, instead of the action, what I've done now, being appreciated and being encouraged to get for that. So maybe it's just a way of distracting police that works okay, where we castigate police. So then police will be discouraged. We're not able to go home long. No, we'll never be. So we are not leaving any stone unturned. We are not leaving any leech unfollowed, any leech that we get. Firefighters also sought to speak with the adopted father of the suspect. He was reluctant to make statements on camera. However, the deceased best friend also narrated in detail how he and other family members searched for the deceased before his body was found. I spoke to him last on Monday at about 9 p.m. It was a public holiday. So on Tuesday, I was on my way to his house in uh, Banana Island in Ikui. When I left my house, I started calling him. And Usifo is, uh, is one is, a, is somebody that if he misses your call, he calls you back immediately. I was calling him before, from VGC to maybe Lekki Face One. I called maybe like six, seven times. He did not pick his call. He did not call me back. Then this was about maybe two o'clock in the afternoon. Then at about uh, between Lekki Face One to Banana Gate, I called maybe like another 15 times because I needed, I would need a code to get into the estate. So when I got to the gate, he still was not picking, so I called somebody else to give me a code. So I entered the estate. When I got to his house, I didn't even enter from the gate because there's a transparent gate. I saw that the Hilux was in his, total Hilux was in front of the house, but the Range Rover was not there. So I called his PA, where is uh, Usifo? He said that, uh, that he came to Banana that morning, the cook told him Usifo uh, went out we left the house on Sunday and was not and was not back at that Tuesday morning. So I said, okay, have you asked Raman, one of his business partners, and have you asked Raman? Said Raman said the same thing that he has been calling him. He has not picked up his phone till that time, but he sent a message. Ah. So I was like, okay. So I said, okay, maybe when he's ready, he will call me back. I now got to VGC and now met Gambo and the partner Raman. I said, show me the messages. So they showed me. And I said, go one, he's not a message person. He's a talking person. The English they use here. You see, if I won't use this kind of English to reply, something is wrong. I don't think this is useful. So we now decided that, okay, in the morning, the next day we'll try and do a search. Yusufo is uh, the third son in a family of four. He has two other brothers um, and a younger sister. And uh, his siblings, they all live abroad. And Usifo grew up as a child who was raised by very good parents in a Christianly manner. And he is a guy who's always had business in his DNA. He's always liked to do business. But what I'll tell you about Usifo is that Usifo is very respectable. Usifo will never hurt a fly. Usifo loves people. Usifo goes beyond the immediate family to know his cousins, to know his uncles. I've had the very regrettable privilege of seeing that dead body five times. My cousin's hands were tied so badly that the rope entered his skin. The rope is right there as an exhibit with the police. That binding could not have been done by that lady alone, not possible. Even if he was drugged, it is not possible because I saw the lady and I, was, I saw my cousin. I said, this is not possible. Apart from the fact that he was tied, there were multiple stabs on his body. That is correct. Multiple. So that story of two stabs and neck is not true. He was stabbed in other places. His leg. In fact, in Yaba Mortuary, the attendants were so dramatic that they told us clearly 
The stabbing here was so bad that it's a hole. The guy stuck his two fingers into my cousin's body in my presence. I am serious. The Doppler vein, he was stabbed here deliberately. So it was not he was just stabbed on the neck. No, he was stabbed on the Doppler vein twice. He was stabbed on his body multiply. He doesn't talk much about himself. He's quite busy, like a busy person. I would say that he, at some point in time, got to know that he likes to carry girls, like, and he smokes, he drinks, and takes drugs also. So I don't know deep about him. His character, he gets angry easily. He has issue with his wife, so, but, his children is what is targeted at family man. He wasn't into happy married life or something. It was just more of catching for his kids. I can't remember some of his friends that I've met, but like remember their faces kind of really all get names, but I've met two people that I said friends something. I don't have ten million in my back account to I have like four hundred or five hundred accounts. Michael gave me um his laptop. He had two laptops, so I told him that I wanted laptop, so he gave me one and that was what I sold to get the money. So it's a uh, Marco. I wasn't doing no show when I was with him anymore. I was getting more from the him than doing the ushering, so there was no need on um, ushering. Ushering can be 15k, 20k. It gives me more than the ushering. The apartment where it was said it was leaking. So then they said I should go. They said it was free and I too was free. So like less than see. Um, it was Sunday on the 13th. Yeah. I decided to check online about the um, shortlets because it said I didn't want hotel. They will not be next place so like it's not be fun like being in the house or something. So that was when I decided to check for a shortlet. So I sent it to him and he said it was okay. Then he said I should go check the place out. So I checked it and it was okay then he made payments. He sent one of I that was for like four days and after I paid the money. So after like one hour, it came. When it came, then we went to get food. We went out to eat and also get drinks. And we'll just be, we just indoor watching movie, drinking, smoking. He woke up before me, but I was still feeling sleepy and dizzy because of the smoke, drink, and the drug. So he asked what and what we I need, like what we need. So I was like, um, we need to buy food and drug because the, the drug that we brought already finished. He sends the money to the account. Why the other one? He gave me the card because he was trying to make payments and it didn't go through so he gave me the card i didn't have access to his card but i i know the pin code before i was leaving it's too dark to lock the door but when i got in i was knocking uh, as there was no answer i opened the door was already open like it wasn't locked and the duvet was on the floor plus pillows the the bed the couch was facing the door and the bed was stained with um, blood already and um, the floor where it was was blood and then music was on the TV was on the room was already disarranged like someone broke in then i saw him on the floor i didn't know what to do i took my things with this thing and left i was just i was afraid i didn't know 
if I have raised alarm, they will have arrested me for doing it because I and him were just the only people in the room. I was, I just, I just left. I was packing my things to leave. Then I noticed that my clothes were stained, so I changed it to another. I took the bag that contained his ID and documents, bank statements. My bag was already on the floor. I met my bag on the floor. And then the stuff it was with was, was on the TV set. That's where the stuff I took was on, on the TV set. So I just packed them and just put them into the nylon and left. I took his phone on the following week. I was home, then I went out to withdraw some money from the um, ATM that I was with. I withdrew 200. Before that day, um, on Tuesday, you already told me that he's going to give me the money that I requested for. And when I came out, when I was arrested and they were saying I made away with 5 million naira, there was no 5 million naira in the account. I just did it. It's not like I had something to do with his death. I never had anything to do with his death. The lady that I rented the, the apartment from, I had to make it hard that she should please probably send the security guy to check on him that I haven't seen, I haven't heard from him. That's what I said to her. And they came to my house and they arrested me, took me to the station. I didn't involve anybody. I don't know who must have come into the apartment. Definitely somebody did that, but I don't know who that person is. I don't know what happened when I left to buy the food. I don't know. Because of the thing I did after not alerting police and then also withdrawing money, I feel guilty for what happened. I did not kill him. I know you feel whether I did not kill him, but my doing, taking his money and not reporting the police, I believe that somebody knew where we were and then waited till I left before they could enter. The pressure and people, when I was talking to security guy and it was like, no, nobody entered into the apartment, that it was just me that entered into the apartment. And 